title is Asymmetric Growth Impact of Physical Policy, a Post-Choke uh, Policy uh, Scenario for Egypt. Uh, let me first out, uh, summarize the outline of my paper, of this paper. We first I'll take you through the motivation and the objectives. Um, then we'll, we'll discuss the econometric technique, and then we'll show the results and, and the conclusion. So let's start with the uh, very uh, uh, old question, a long-lived debate about what is the optimal government size. So what, how much the government should intervene in the economy in order to unleash a sustainable high growth in, in the long run? Of course, we understand that economic theory justifies such in, in, in intervention from the government side as a response for um, the market failure. So the government should provide public goods, internalize externalities, covering costs when there are significant economies of scale, etc. So that's what we know from, from economic, uh, economic theory. But still, if we go back to the main question is, does government spending enhance economic growth? And if this is true, or regardless uh, if whether this is true or not, is this going to be the same case with developed and developing countries at the same time? We understand there are differences. There are many differences between these two uh, group of countries. If we look at developing countries in, in particular, we'll see that how um, they um, suffer from incomplete information, their markets, uh, um, higher degree of market imperfections, uncertainty, and etc. We also what happened with uh, uh, with Egypt last over the last few days. Uh, no one actually knew whether we're gonna have uh, a float system for our uh, exchange rate or not. So till the last minute, until the um, the central bank uh, made their announcement. There was like lots of rumors, people like the, the market was just in, in, in a disorder or in a chaotic case. So that is part of the problems uh, that are faced in developing countries. So the question is, e even if economic or even if government spending support or enhance growth in developed countries, is it going to be the same way in developing countries? As we said, there are many differences between these two groups of countries. That's why we are in particular interested in the context of developing countries because it's, it's more, more, just, uh, more, more challenging compared to developed countries. And the other question is, would the impact be the same in both periods of expansion and contraction? So would we have the same impact if the government intervention happened in good time or in bad time? So there are many questions arise in this, in this area. But let's see or let's look at what we actually observe. Uh, government, regardless of their positions, left, left or right, tend to inject the economy with large amount of stimulus packages during harsh times. So whenever they face problems, they always rely on government spending or most of the time they do spend, inject the economy with uh, more amounts of money. So. This might work well in developed economies, as we said, because they have different structure, uh, and the, the problems that are faced by developing countries are totally different from those uh, that uh, the developed country face. Um, so the question here, how about developing countries? That's why we are interested uh, in particular uh, in looking at the case with developing countries. And in particular, in our paper, he will look at Egypt, especially in times of economic and institutional shocks. And one of the best examples we could look at recently is the Arab Spring. So um, <clears throat> let's, before proceeding, before looking at what's happening in Egypt after the Arab Spring or after the, um, uh, the, the start of the revolution in 2011, let's look at the empirical evidence. Empirical evidence uh, of whether there is um, a, a positive impact of um, a government spending in, on economic growth or not. Uh, what we found, I'm not going to spend much time on the literature because I guess everyone uh, can go back and read the literature, but I'm just going to highlight the uh, main points, the main lessons we see from the, like, from the empirical literature. So we found ambiguous evidence as to whether public spending enhanced growth. So it's not really clear whether this is the case or not. 
The impact may vary depending on the component of government expenditure under consideration or by sector. So even some papers will say, well, there is some impact, there is some positive or negative impact or whatever the impact they found, but some other papers will claim that this impact will be different depending on which sector or which component we are considering in, 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 in each case. So they give different different outcome, different different results, and also some papers will say, well, economic or government spending enhance economic growth, but under certain conditions, and then they they proceed to explain what those conditions are. And we found also some other paper looking at productive and or distinguishing between productive and non-productive government spending. So you can see now there's no clear-cut answer whether the um, government spending uh, enhance economic growth or not. We could look at different uh, 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 like stream of papers looking at how government uh, spending may, um, uh, especially in investment, or uh, may, may crowd out uh, domestic investment, and et cetera. So there are many reasons, many explanations why we don't have a clear cut uh, answer. But the main, uh, uh, the, the main thing that all these papers share together, or the majority of these papers together, is the linearity assumption. So what basically uh, they assume, uh, they presume or take as a period there that the impact of increasing government spending will be similar, not in sign, I'm talking about the magnitude, will be similar to that of decreasing government spending. So let me just say um, an example. So in, any, in, in most papers you'll see, because they use linear models, so they would say, <coughs> excuse me, so if there's one one percent increase in, in government spending, then the, that's the impact on uh, on uh, on GDP or on economic growth. And at the same time, they wouldn't they wouldn't expect if the one percent that was decreasing government spending that might have have different might have a different different impact on economic growth. And that is the question we're asking. That is the exact. That, that's what we ask. What if the effects? What if the effect of increasing government spending uh, is different? What if this effect is different from uh, decreasing government uh, spending? Again, I'm just looking at not just the sign, because we understand it could be positive and negative, but at the end, are they have or do they have the same magnitude, the same impact? Um, so now let me take you to why we are looking in particular to Egypt, why we are interested in looking at Egypt. Of course, we all saw what happened in 2011 in Egypt since the, uh, uh, the, since the Egyptian revolution. We, uh, the economy has gone through successive political and economic shocks. This had serious implication on in net inter international reserves and public expenditure and also budget deficit. So, for example, if we look at the economic growth in Egypt uh, over the last uh, decade, you will see how the, after 2011 there was a sharp drop on the GDP growth rate from almost uh, 6 to 7% per year, going back to um, uh, or drop to less than 2% when you go toward 2011, 2012, and, and even after that. And for the first time in the last decade, in a, in a whole decade, we see that the government, the growth, the growth, the growth rate is uh, is, is is negative. Uh, may I ask you? Can can you can can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Can people hear me? Yes, we are hearing you good. Okay, that's fine. Sorry, so because uh, I just uh, received a message from somebody saying he can't hear me. So please check your settings. Uh, sorry, let me go back to the. Um, uh, I was just worried that if I'm just talking to myself in my office, I look like a crazy person. <laughs> so I'm happy. I'm glad you all can hear me. Uh, so let me go back to the um, to the graph, the, to the figure we have here. As I said, in Egypt after the uh, revolution, we saw. For the first time, we saw uh, uh, the negative uh, uh, figure for uh, the uh, GDP per capita growth. 
Um, so again, so that just tell you how um, um, how the economy went through economic problems uh, in terms of in terms of growth after the uh, revolution. The same thing with the budget deficit. You will see uh, the, the figure we have it in, in, in on the screen now. We're looking at the budget deficit from 2000 to 2012, and you see how this trend is increasing. So it's, 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 it's really grow, growing in a very worrying manner. So there are different, as I said, there are different uh, uh, impacts on, on the whole economy. Also, if we look at the total reserves, we'll see how the total reserves dropped as well after after the the shock so there are different challenges here we are in a situation that the economy is going through serious uh, challenges after the revolution so if the government would like to intervene if the government need to do something of course they do so they need to be very very wise the way you do things because you wouldn't have uh, uh, you wouldn't have the resources that will allow you uh, to, uh, 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 to, 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 to push the economy back into recovery, you have to think in a more pragmatic way. And that's what we're trying to do. As uh, Professor Hassan highlighted in his presentation and in, through our discussion, uh, in different situations, in different uh, contexts with oil-producing countries, for example, so they have these resources, so they could push the economy, they could spend uh, uh, generously on pushing their economies back into equilibrium or into recovery if uh, if something happened. But with, with a poor country, with a context like that we have in Egypt, we don't have this uh, luxury, we don't have this, this, uh, uh, this option. So what would we do? So th that's why the papers are just a scenario after the shock to uh, Egypt or to any other country that going through similar uh, problems or similar economic and institutional uh, shocks. So what we're thinking is, if there are non-linearities in the government spending and their impact on growth, then we could actually identify those sectors with high grade uh, growth or with the highest grade, uh, 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 with the highest uh, growth rate when we increase government spending and identify those sectors with the least uh, uh, um, uh, uh, problems will, will result from, uh, <clears throat> from uh, dropping or cutting the government spending. So let's see, let's see how we deal with this in, uh, uh, in, econometric, uh, uh, in our econometric model. What we use in our econometric uh, model here, we use the um, nonlinear ERDEL model, and this is an extension for the uh, ERDEL uh, model, <coughs> sorry, which uses the bound test for uh, testing for co-integration or long-run uh, relationships. So what we have here is just an extension of the ERDEL model. So the main equation we try to estimate here in our nonlinear ERDEL model is by Shen et al. Uh, 2013. Um, what we have here, we see in equation one, we have y is the our outcome variable. So in our case would be uh, GDP growth or per capita GDP growth. Uh, we have beta uh, loss and beta positive xt positive. That is just the partial sum uh, process of positive changes in uh, whatever variable you are interested in. So in our case would be government uh, spending. And beta minus xt minus is again uh, is the um, the uh, uh, the negative sum of uh, changes in 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 government spending. In our case, the ut is just an the usual error term. So from here, we what we see in 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 our equation in this equation. So beta beta plus and beta uh, minus is the asymmetric, the asymmetric long-term parameters. And this explain, equation two explains to you how xt is decomposed into positive sum and negative sum. So that is the process how we create these two x plus and x zero, and we assume that x, uh, sorry, x plus and x uh, negative, and x zero here is just zero. So we, we, we don't have, we don't, we, we, in our, in our uh, specification, we have only, x uh, uh, plus and x zero. Um, so what we do next then, we can actually 
um, uh, from the main equation, from equation one, we can drive the error correction model of this equation, which is provided again by Shin et al. 2013, and which exactly what we see now. So we have uh, the beta uh, plus here should be, which is the long run parameter or the long run impact should be the theta theta uh, uh, plus divided by uh, by rho. Rho here is the coefficient of the lag dependent uh, dependent variable. And on the other side, you will see that these uh, pi's will be the short run impact. So what we have here, the advantage of using this model, you'll see we're not looking, we're not only modeling the asymmetries, we're looking also at the, uh, the relationship in the long run and in the short run. So we do two things. So the, the nonlinear ERD model allows us to investigate this relationship, the relationship between government spending and, and economic growth in both in the short run and in the long run. And also it allows us to distinguish between the effect of increasing and decreasing uh, uh, spending, government spending on, on growth. So let me um, take you to the, uh, the, the data, what the data set we use. We did the analysis in both at the aggregated level and the disaggregated level. So we looked at the government expenditure as a whole in total, and also we looked at different uh, sectors, so spending on, on different uh, sectors. So the data we use, we have annual data. Unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't have the luxury of uh, having a longer data set. So the data we had uh, from 1980 to 2014, that's annual data, so very short uh, sample and actually this is one of the benefits of using um, NARDL model so it performs well in in, in small samples. Um, we the variables are of interest are real real per capita GDP so to proxy for economic growth and government expenditure so we as we said we're going to look at the total and also we're going to split this into uh, level or uh, uh, depending on the sector, so um, the, we, we could find the data for the same uh, uh, time span uh, for education, government spending on education, and government spending or the military expenditure in, in Egypt. We collected the data from, from data stream. So this is the data set we have. So we have actually here uh, uh, two variables. So in the, in the left-hand side, we have the uh, real per capita GDP. On the right hand side, we have the government expenditure, and uh, we looked first at the total, uh, and then we, we, we looked at the uh, both education and military afterwards. So let me uh, take you through the Embraker results. Uh, first, of course, for um, such model, you need to look at the um, unit root properties of your data, and um, the one of the uh, good reasons to use uh, 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 ARDL model in general, and in our case, nonlinear ARDL model, is that you could actually deal with data that are I0. You could combine these I0 and I1. So the only problem you would have if you get data of I2. So what we're trying to make sure is that we don't have I2 in uh, uh, in, I, in in our data set. So we don't we don't want to have a series where uh, which is integrated from the second order. So it seems uh, everything good. So we look at the <clears throat> Y and X, which is the <clears throat> GDP and the government expenditure. And it seems that both are I1, integrated of order one, which uh, actually is expected. So as long as we don't have I2 series, so we can actually proceed. And uh, before we look at the estimations, we first need to do some diagnostic tests. So first of all, we think of, is there uh, integration? Is there any integration? So we use the uh, uh, the, the bound test of Pesron as I explained, and what you can see first in, in one, two, three, four, these are different specifications for the same model. So what we have here is government expenditure on the right hand side. Uh, that's the aggregate figure. So that's the total. And on the right hand, sorry, in the left hand side, we have uh, GDP per capita, the real. Uh, per capita GDP. Okay, so one, two, three, four are just the lags we used. 
So uh, for the dependent and the independent variables, or for uh, y and n and x. So you'll see the, the first model is 4 and 2, the second model is 2 and 2, the third model is 3 and 3, and, and etc. The fourth mo model is 4 lags and 4 lags. 4 uh, lags from Q, from U, which is, uh, sorry, Y, which is the JDB per capita, and X uh, is the uh, government expenditure. So uh, this is just uh, looking at different, different specification, uh, trying to see whether the, uh, the results will stand or not. So what we have here, as I said before, we go to the uh, estimation of our parameters. Uh, and by the way, um, the uh, ARDEL, or the NARDEL model use OLS estimation. Uh, so what we're looking at here is the, um, whether there's asymmetric impact or not. So whether there are differences, there are statistically differences between uh, positive increases in, 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 uh, in, in government spending and negative or, or, or negative shocks to government or negative changes to government expenditure on, on growth or not. So that's the, that's the first part of, of the table. And the, the, the bottom part here, you look at contiguration, that's the contiguration test, as I said. So with the contiguration, when you reject the null hypothesis, that means that we could conclude that there is a long-run relationship. So we do, we have, we have kind of evidence that we have a, a relationship between uh, government spending and economic growth in, in, in Egypt using the four different uh, specification and using the co-integration bound test of, uh, of this around 2001. So we reject the null hypothesis, so we have already an, uh, an, a statistically uh, significant relationship or we have uh, evidence that there is, um, there is co-integration. So going back to the, the first section of the table, as you'll see, the question is, does beta plus is different, is beta plus different from beta minus? So that means past changes and negative changes. So this is a very uh, uh, typical world test, and you will see that uh, we reject the, the null hypothesis, which means there are differences. But what about the short run? So when we look at the short run, we don't see uh, many, uh, uh, many differences. So the idea here, again, so what we to conclude or to summarize the, the table we see now, it seems that we have uh, these asymmetric impacts uh, um, exist in the long run. So the differences between the positive changes and negative changes in government spending on economic growth are only on the long run. So they are not on the, in the short run. And this the long run effects that summarize the impact in, uh, on the long run. Just remember, just to take you back, what is beta here? Beta, if you go back to the model, <coughs> beta here is the, in this model, is theta divided by, by rho, okay? So what you have in, in our estimation here, that is the long run parameters, that's the impact in the long run. And when we have this here, you'll see we're looking at the, uh, which is the uh, middle part of the table here, you have the long run effects. This is beta positive, which means the positive change or the impact of the positive change. It seems significant across all specification and it has the same sign. So that means the positive changes will have positive impact, long run impact, because we're looking at beta now. So we have a long run impact from uh, going from uh, uh, expenditure, government expenditure on on economic uh, economic growth, and with the case of negative changes, it does have also negative impact on the long run, and these are statistically significant. And you'll see they have the same uh, the same sign. So this is the estimation of the parameters that of the of equation two. Okay, and uh, you will see what we are actually interested in in this case is the multiplier effect or the, the dynamic multiplier. So what we're trying to do here, we're trying to pose a scenario. What if there are, there is a shock, a positive shock to government expenditure and a negative shock to government expenditure? How these both, now we conclude there are differences, there are statistically, uh, statistical differences between the uh, both impacts and now the question is what if there is a shock on the government spending which means what if the government 
uh, decided tomorrow to increase their spending or to decrease their spending, so to, to, to have a, a budget cuts. So how this is going to impact, how this is going to influence the, um, uh, the, 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 the economic growth in, in Egypt? So to do this, we uh, generate the uh, dynamic multiplier graphs. Um, I know it doesn't seem very, um, very clear on, on the screen, but I'll try as much as I can to explain what we can see now. So what we have here, let me just uh, um, uh, very carefully, let's look at the uh, green line, if you could see it. That is the impact of the uh, path change, and the red line, is the impact of negative changes. Um, and the blue line show you the asymmetries and it tells you where they are and you see the shaded area that tells you how significant, whether these uh, differences are significant uh, or not. So obviously, we, we know that these, uh, these differences are significant. That's why you'll see these bands below or outside the uh, uh, zero, so zero is outside these two bands. And uh, also, what the blue line tells you, it tells you how, which one is greater, which one has a greater impact on, on growth. So since that you see the, uh, the blue line is below zero, which means the negative impact has a greater impact or negative change on uh, uh, on a government expenditure will have a greater impact on uh, on an economic growth in Egypt uh, compared to positive change. And it seems to be the case with the four models, with the four different specifications. So you will see the positive impact, the green, the green line is above zero, which means we have the uh, boss changes will have positive impact. So if you increase government spending, will have positive impact on uh, economic growth. And the red line, you'll see in the four specification, again, it's below zero. It is negative. So we have a negative impact on if, you, if government drop their government spending, this will have negative impact on economic growth in Egypt. But the question now is which one is greater? Which one? So you will look at the, uh, the blue line. You will see that is uh, going down zero is below zero, which means that negative impact or negative, the impact of negative changes to government spending is greater than positive changes uh, 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 in government spending and their, their impact on, on economic growth uh, in Egypt. So that was the aggregate level. So we looked at, again, GDP on the left-hand side government expenditure on the right hand side and what we have here we, we looked at the in total government expenditure in total so then we thought why not looking at different sectors and see if we could actually identify different impacts across sector for government spending on on these sectors and their impact on economic growth so what we uh, we did we could find data as i said only for uh, education and and military expenditure and um, uh, model five here some, uh, is for e education. Uh, model six is for military expenditure. So we've got different, uh, some different results in this case. If, um, if you look at um, the, first of all, the contiguration, we still have contiguration. So there's, there's long run relationship between uh, a, a government expenditure on education and growth and the same thing applies to the relationship between government expenditure on uh, military expenditure and, and, and growth. But what is interesting here is the, uh, the, the symmetries uh, or the asymmetric impact. Is this, are these differences or are, is the positive change will have a different impact compared to negative change? Um, well, in the long run, which is again, just to remind you, that's beta zero, Sorry, not beta zero, beta plus and beta beta minus. That tells you whether they are asymmetric impact or not. So what we have here is in model five, which looking at the education, government spending and education has positive impact or these asymmetric impact uh, 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 happen in the long run and in the short run. But these asymmetries does not happen in the with the case of uh, 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 military expenditure happen only in the short run. Okay, so there are differences, or there are uh, uh, the, the impact of 
post changes and negative changes in government uh, spending on military has uh, impact only in the short run, not not in the long run. Okay, so uh, let's 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 look at the uh, uh, dynamic multiplier. Just I know I'm running out of time. So what we see here is the same thing, but now with education, it seems that positive changes to government expenditure is paying off more compared to, uh, to negative uh, uh, changes. Uh, I see now Radu are just uh, saying <laughs> time out. So uh, just to, to conclude now, so the idea here is that we, we found uh, the, the, when we look at education, government spending education, it seems that post changes have greater impact in growth ne uh, compared to uh, negative uh, negative changes with military uh, expenditure it seemed the other way so negative uh, uh, changes are uh, or, or, uh, or have greater impact compared to compared to post changes so let me uh, just summarize the conclusion so what we take away from this exercise we have empirical evidence first of all that there is nonlinear relationship between government expenditure and economic growth in Egypt, which means uh, most of these studies that look at or assume linearity are uh, or suffer from uh, misspecification. Uh, also, how we could, how we could uh, uh, use this to draw some uh, policy implication that, is, uh, that are useful in the case of, uh, of Egypt and probably on, in the case of other uh, developing countries going through similar economic and, and institutional shocks. Uh, first of all, we could see and that we, can, we, we saw that policymakers can craft a number of policy scenarios for the, uh, for the, for after the shock and see whether they could identify sectors with highest growth impact of increased government expenditure and they could identify sectors with least disruptive consequences in response to budget cuts. This is a very pragmatic way when you look at what you would like to do. Of course, as an economist, I can't tell uh, the uh, policymaker what their priorities are, what their, uh, 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 um, what, what they, which, which sector they're going to spend on. But at the end of the day, I could, we could identify these differences and the policymakers can, 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 uh, can draw their own agendas and see what they uh, uh, if they could follow a uh, priorities-based government spending is policy depending on the situation. So uh, that's all. Thank you for, uh, um, for listening, and I'm, uh, I'm ready to take your questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm.